morning everyone Leah here today I'm doing another review of sunscreens that came out this year I just wanted to mainly give you guys my perspectives on the newest sunscreen launches that we've been seeing this year before we jump into it actually what would really really help is that you click the like button and share this video to one of your friends who might be in search for a sunscreen also for reference what I have learned in the past couple of years after reviewing tons of sunscreens doing a lot of SPF research it's that mineral sunscreen and chemical chemical sunscreens actually work in a similar manner. The common knowledge is that mineral sunscreens reflect the UV rays whereas chemical sunscreens absorbs the UV rays and that's how they protect your skin from the UV rays. However, further research reveals that mineral sunscreens and chemical sunscreens actually work in similar ways by absorbing most of the UV rays and mineral sunscreens may be by 5% more reflect the light. So regardless of mineral sunscreens or chemical sunscreens, at the end of the day, I think what's best for you is to choose a sunscreen that you just want to apply every single day that feels comfortable on your skin, that feels just good on your skin. I know that intro was really long, but let's actually get into some products reviews. So I might start with a Korean sunscreen actually. This is Beauty of Joseon Relief Sun Rice and Probiotics SPF 50 PA4 pluses which kind of gives you a nice protection against UVA and UVB. Now it is going to be impossible for you to find this brand in Korea. It's one of those brands that are probably more popular internationally or more on the US side and I snagged mine on Yes Style after seeing it kind of being blown up by a lot of American US influencers. So I was definitely curious about it and now I know why because it is manufactured by one of the most reliable the biggest contract manufacturer in Korea called Colmar Korea. A lot of Koreans are familiar with this brand is Round Lab Birch Juice Sunscreen that's also reformulated after the whole um, saga of failed testing. These two formulas are very 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 similar. The only difference is probably the main UV filters that it used but the base formula, the cushion, the emollientness of the texture, it feels super similar. Anyways, coming back to the Beauty of Joseon product, this product does use all modern filters that is not going to be found in the US market. It uses Evenol A+, Evenol T150, Tinosaur M and Iso Trizonol. It uses the modern advanced filter that's known to be less sensitizing and that's known to be more photostable. Application super easy, it blends into the skin instantly without really leaving any cast at all because it, it uses chemical filters. But what I really, really do like about this is that it just feels like it's the right amount of moisture. It's not too greasy, too heavy. It has that kind of perfect balance of maybe oil and water for my skin. And it leaves your skin really kind of velvety, soft, smooth. So I really have no complaints about this product. I would definitely comfortably give five out of five. I think this would be a really great all year round sunscreen for most skin types. If you live in the States, you just want a sunscreen that's pretty similar in terms of the texture to the Beauty of Joseon, I would definitely recommend you to check out Laneige Hydro UV Defense Sunscreen SPF 50 Plus Broad Spectrum. Now, Laneige is a Korean skincare brand. This product is manufactured in Korea by the More Pacific Corporation. However, it is designed for the US market, especially with the US approved chemical filters. So it uses avobenzone, homosalate, octisalate, octocrylene. So all US approved, very, very, very old school, traditional chemical filters. But I found this to be be super comfortable like surprisingly on my skin because a lot of the US chemical sunscreens do make my eyes sting or burn or it does sensitize my skin a little bit however the Laneige really nailed it it really is a great 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 comfortable creamy emollient formula that just breaks into your skin easily it kind of does have that hydroness or water breaking texture that I was pleasantly surprised by and I've been enjoying it ever since the best part about this is that it does not feel 
oily. I know a lot of the chemical sunscreens out in the United States, they tend to be a little bit oily or leaves that dewy, glowy or greasy finish, but this actually feels like it just leaves your skin with a very natural finish and I really enjoyed about that. The only con about this product is definitely the strong scent. I'm not a huge fan of that, but it does the job and the scent or the fragrance really doesn't linger around, which is something that, you know, I can compromise. I'll give it 4.5 out of 5. Next we have Tatcha the Silk Sunscreen Hydrating Mineral Fluid SPF 50 PA4 Pluses, which I appreciate it because for US sunscreen, you don't need to do the PA rating system, but they did it. So you're gonna be well protected from the UVA. Now I know this is 60 bucks for this tiny little 50 ml bottle. I wish I hated it so much, but I in fact fell in love with it after just one swatch. I love the Silk series from Tatcha. So if you are that type of a person who just appreciates that silky, smooth, porcelain or poreless looking skin, this product is going to be right up your alley. I mean, I wish I hated this product because I don't want to repurchase it with this price tag. I probably wouldn't because I have so many other sunscreens to go through, but it is a beautiful, beautiful formula for sure. It is a liquidy fluid formula that uses 10% zinc oxide. I wouldn't say this product is hydrating despite the claim. I do think this product is definitely for more oily combo skin or someone who just loves to wear makeup or someone who just wants that kind of no makeup makeup look or someone who just likes tinted sunscreen i think this is going to make your skin look fabulous with or without makeup but by the end of the day my skin would feel a little bit dried out because of the price tag i'm gonna rate this four out of five moving on to the next mineral sunscreen this is from sunbum it is their daily mineral sunscreen moisturizer spf 30 and this contains 15% of zinc oxide. I'm totally new to this brand. I don't know why I haven't really given a try of, of this brand. This product was recommended by Ramon from Glow by Ramon. He really enjoyed this product and it is a tinted mineral sunscreen. So you guys know me, I just love tinted mineral sunscreens because I do not wear foundation. So I think I just love and appreciate the fact that a lot of tinted sunscreens can just give a little bit of an oomph to my skin by evening out the complexion and kind of canceling out some redness that I don't need like a concealer or a foundation or anything. The Sun Buff Mineral Sunscreen has been pretty amazing. I mean, it's $22 for 50 ml. I enjoy this very clean and sleek and pump packaging so it's easier to dispense product. It's phenomenal, like the texture is lotion-y. It just breaks down into a lightweight moisturizer. Surprisingly, it didn't have any white cast on my skin, but I'd be curious to find out if it does for a darker skin tone. It leaves my skin with this natural sheen, so it's not too greasy or too drying. I didn't experience that kind of drying feeling from this, unlike the Tatcha one. I would still give this more try to have like conclusive thoughts about this, but so far it's been great. But another big, big, big drawback was definitely the, the banana coconutty scent that Sunbum is known for. I guess it's a huge like shock every time I use it because I'm not really used to that kind of beachy or Florida-ish smell <laughs> so it's definitely a personal preference I wouldn't say I enjoy this smell at all in terms of the rating I think I can still give it four out of five there's another mineral sunscreen lotion out there called K skin universal mineral face lotion SPF 55 now you've seen me use this for the first time in one of my chatty get ready with me videos at the time I was pretty obsessed with it because I was quite amazed by how quickly it disappears on my skin knowing that this is a zinc oxide based sunscreen it doesn't leave any cast on my skin like there's not even an ashy look the brand came out this year and it was created by the supermodel winnie harlow and knowing her i know that inclusivity or making this mineral sunscreen lotion as universal as possible was probably her biggest focus it didn't leave a cast on her skin i'm wondering if it doesn't on even like a deeper chocolatey brown black skin as well so if you guys have tried it let me know in the comment box below i'd be curious to find out it has this very strange yellow 
content that kind of became a problem and as I was trying to review and film this video today I was wanting to get more information on the product claims the description and the ingredients but I found out that they took down the product from their own website from Sephora as well so I was like what's going on young from yeah, yeah, yeah young he's told me that some people experience the yellow staining like that they used a turmeric face mask or something so to some people I think it stains their skin thing I don't know what's going on with a product issue is it the batch issue and whatnot I do think there still needs to be some investigation and I don't know there might be some follow-ups from the brand but at least from my experience I really love the fact that this doesn't leave a cast at all it blends into your skin very 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 seamlessly but the textural experience is what kind of drives me a little bit nuts it it has this kind of lotiony texture that blends into the skin really easily but it leaves your skin with this kind of like weird tacky finish it kind of turns into a very gluey finish <laughs> yeah it's definitely not a pleasant experience and the fragrance or the scent of it is definitely on a very unpleasant side so apart from that i think this product might have had more potential I, so far in my experience i think i would have to give two out of five i have another mineral sunscreen to show you guys this is josie marin get even sun milk spf 33 also can be found in sephora i know this is somewhat on a pricier side but i do think this might be a really great option for those who have drier skin type but someone who wants to still use mineral sunscreen. Now, I say this from time to time that mineral sunscreens, zinc oxide based, titanium dioxide based can be inherently drying. So for drier skin types, it's not gonna be a good experience. But I would say this is definitely on a more hydrating and moisturizing side. Josie Marin's previous sunscreen was not a pleasant sunscreen at all. So I was the biggest skeptic of trying this, but the brand has sent me to try out. At first, I was, pretty surprised because they packaged it in a glass bottle i don't know how well uv coated this bottle is but any uv um, exposure to any formula just besides sunscreen can degrade the formula pretty quickly i'm sure they've done enough stability and compatibility testing with this packaging but i would still recommend you guys to use it as quickly as possible store this away from direct sunlight as much as possible inside your medicine cabinet or your vanity or what have you this uses a blend of zinc oxide and titanium dioxide it has minimal white cast it doesn't leave a noticeable cast on my skin but as i said Josie marin is known for their argan oil it uses argan oil cacao plum it's going to be antioxidant rich but it also does feel pretty um nourishing so it's definitely more on the moisturizing and nourishing side so if you do have oily combo skin definitely run away from this but if you do have dry skin i would still give this a try even though this product is oil blended or oil infused product it still feels comfortable on my skin like i didn't feel like i was applying like straight up oil or it was too greasy at all it does leave you a nice sheen glowy sheen the only thing that i kind of found out after trying it for a couple of times is that it can pill it can pill under your makeup so you might want to make sure that you clean all those kind of strings up before you move on with your day because it'll definitely pill besides all that i think this is still a beautiful sunscreen so i would still rate this 3.5 what do we have here this is the glow recipe watermelon grow 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 glow no oh my gosh niacinamide sunscreen it uses a blend of zinc oxide and three different chemical filters that are approved in the united states including homosylate octisylate octocrylene now i know this was the most highly anticipated product from all glow recipe fans especially if you're a fan of watermelon series like this is something that they could have easily capitalized on their success of their previous range i know that this became quickly like controversial because of the major pilling issue i really do enjoy the formula i could definitely use this all year round because it's a hybrid sunscreen it's not too drying it's not too greasy it gives you that nice 
glow recipe, signature, glassy, glowy, dewy look. So if you're into that, this is definitely something that you can definitely try. For me, it did pill, but it didn't pill to the extent that it's like uncomfortable. Josie Marin probably pilled slightly more on my skin. I think the pilling issue is probably very, very different from a person to person. I know some people didn't experience any pilling at all, but some people on TikTok that I see, like they experience major, major pilling. But for me, it was very tolerable. So I I would still continue using this. Besides that, I think there's not enough hybrid sunscreens out there in the United States that uses both zinc oxide and other chemical filters. So if you're looking for a hybrid sunscreen, like why not? But rating wise, I would still give this 3.5 out of five. It's definitely not gonna be my most reached sunscreen, but if I use up all of my five out of five sunscreens, I'll definitely be comfortable using this one. Next we have Hero Cosmetics Force Shield Super Light Sunscreen Broad Spectrum SPF 30. This is something that you guys wanted me to try so I added this on the last minute. I Amazon primed it. I don't really have a lot of using experience of this but I still really enjoyed it. So this is going to be more of my first impression. This uses 17% of zinc oxide. Price point, it's less than $20 for the 50 mil. It has this green tint, which I think it's perfect for redness prone skin so that it kind of neutralizes the redness. And I know Hero Cosmetics makes really wonderful range for acne prone skin. So they definitely had acne prone skin in mind when formulating this, it's like super lightweight. It blends into your skin right away. It leaves your skin super matte as well. To me, it was a little bit too mattifying for my liking, for my normal two combo skin. But if you do have oily acne prone skin, I think this will be a really fabulous lotion for you to try that kind of blots away your sebum, but still at the same time, gives your skin very like refreshing, um, look of mineral sunscreen. Is, is that even a word? Probably not. I would give this four out of five given the price point is very, very accessible. And also um, there's not a lot of mineral sunscreens out there that a lot of acne prone skin can wear. So this would be a really great option. Last but definitely not the least, we have a sunscreen lip balm for you. I know you guys always ask for a recommendation for sunscreen lip balms. I'm basically not the biggest sunscreen lip balm user or lip sunscreen user because I just hate the idea of eating away my sunscreens. But for this, I didn't mind eating it actually. So this is Everyday Human's Big Mood SPF 30 Milky Lip Balm. It uses 8% zinc oxide and zinc oxide only. Only. and I thought this was going to be super drying or like super white casting on my lips because it's zinc oxide what can you expect I have very dry lips so I didn't want to use a zinc oxide based something to dry to further dry out my lips but this proved me wrong I was pleasantly surprised and I've been very enjoying this product so far it tastes like a sweet oat milk latte. It doesn't leave your lips super white casty. Of course, it does have some white cast, but what I do is I would apply this first and then I would coat it with a lipstick or something like that so that the white cast is kind of like wiped away. It does serve a really, really great function. So this is a five out of five for me. So that was it for today's roundup video for all the sunscreens that I've tried from 2020 January till now. I hope you guys enjoyed Enjoyed it. There are definitely a lot of great formulas out there that you guys should try and can try. You know, if you are using something that you already love, definitely no need to switch it. I think the best sunscreen, again, is the sunscreen that you'll really want to apply on a daily basis. And I hope I helped you find something for you. All in all, I think I'm excited um, for Crave Beauty sunscreen development too. And that's also coming up very, very soon. Hopefully, fingers crossed. Again, if you have liked this video, please, please, please support this channel by giving a like and also share this with your friend who's looking for a new sunscreen. Thank you so much again for watching. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.